So good morning, Jeremy. How are you this morning? Yeah, really good. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you for joining me in this video webinar. I wanted to have a chat with you as you guys at Enchas are particular experts in, in the field of, of customer experience. And one area that I know has become particularly prevalent is, is the rise of omni-channel communication. And, and we're seeing a lot of end customers want to communicate with businesses over new mediums in terms of maybe chat, web chat, social media. And I wanted to understand from you, is that um, a process that, that your customers who are providing customer experience to those end users find, find a bit daunting in terms of having to augment and enable all of these new communication mediums? Yeah, so I think it, it, it's a really good question. And I think it's it's there's so much hype and heat and noise within the marketplace about uh, what businesses should be doing in order to serve their customers, you know, more effectively. And actually, if you sort of take it back to basics, so one of the first things that we do with any organization that's looking to invest in technology is actually ask them a couple of really simple questions, which is, um, you know, what are the top five journeys that drive 80 percent of your revenue? What are the top five journeys that drive 80 percent of your complaints? And what are the top five customer journeys that have the highest regulatory impact? And if you stop and look at it from a customer journey perspective, everything else starts to fall in place properly. What, what tends to happen is people jump ahead and start to say, we must have this channel without questioning why or whether the customer uses it or most or whether it's relevant to, to your most popular customer journeys. And that's particularly true when you think about, you know, the latest heat, heat and hype in the market around AI and bots and things like that, that people are rushing to the technology before thinking about the customer journey and what the consumer actually wants. Um, so, yeah, we would always advocate start from the basics and build it up from there. One of the biggest mistakes I think most organizations, you know, can sometimes make is just adding channels for the sake of adding channels. And probably if you look back in the history of time of one of the one of the classic examples of that was social media. So, you know, most marketing departments saw social media as a brilliant, free, cheap way to communicate one to many, do a tweet, do a social media post, communicate free of charge, you haven't had to pay an advertising cost, brilliant. What they didn't do as an organization was then kind of realize, well, if you're gonna communicate with an end consumer through that channel, there's a pretty good probability that that consumer is gonna to wanna to communicate back with you through that channel. And most organizations were completely ill-equipped to deal with the then sort of avalanche a tidal wave of you know customer inquiries that they found coming through social media channels and the skill set that you need to deal with a customer response in 128 characters is quite different to the skill set that you have classically in a in a voice based contact center so you, you know you do have to think about your customer experience strategy think about those customer journeys and then layer in the technology in an intelligent way yeah, it, it, it appears difficult, as you the example you used there of social media, for, for businesses to, to understand fully how these emerging communication channels are going to work. And you mentioned bots, and there is a lot of talk in the industry, and there's a lot of bluster in many cases about the use of artificial intelligence and, and machine learning within bot technology, which, and apparently we're all going to be communicating with bots, and that there's going to be no need for, for human-to-human -human communication. <coughs> Uh, at Ench House, where do you see the chatbot and bot technology have the best, most effective improvement of, of customer experience with your customers? Yeah, so I think, again, um, huge amounts of noise and hype and, and possibly even hysteria in the market around, you know, the bots are coming, AI is coming, it's going to take over the world, everyone's going to lose their job. Uh, all of this kind of noise, a lot of sea level attention, so people... Uh, see, you know, one one layer below sea level being told we need AI, we need bots, we need ML, or NLU, NLP, all of these things, buzzwords that get kind of thrown around again without the proper consideration of how and where it will get used. And what we tend to say to people is one of the first things you need to consider is is what is your customer experience strategy? So is it digital by design or is it digital by default? So an example of digital by default would be somebody like Ryanair. They really don't want you to talk to them. Um, you're gonna be forced through as digital channels, self-service channel, automated channels as much as possible because they're lower cost candidly. 
Um, if we think about somebody like John Lewis, First Direct Bank, people that are happy to invest in the lifetime value of you as a customer and accept that dealing with you maybe through a voice-based call will cost more, but you may end up leaving that interaction more happy, your problem solved, and you'll stay as a lifetime value customer. So there isn't a one-size-fits-all answer to this. Every business is different, and it base, it's based on the market you're in, your competition, your pricing points, all of those things. But, but at a sort of board level, you need to make that determination as to where do you fit on that spectrum. Then when we start to think about how do you layer in um, AI and bots and where do they add most value, there's a sort of a huge shift to uh, you know, the power in your pocket. So if you think about your mobile phone and what's possible now compared to five years or 10 years ago, and you think about where could that be in five years time, you think about technologies like you know the Alexa, Echo Dots and things like that that most people have got on their kitchen worktop these days. The ability to make that type of quite powerful technology affordable and accessible to most people is really driving um, customer expectations. So if you look at IT spend, um, you know, consumer IT spend outstrips business and government IT spend by a ratio of 10 to 1. So an expectation is set in a consumer's mind of how things should work in the consumer world. So an example of that would be video conferencing. You know, everyone got a smartphone, suddenly you can do FaceTime with somebody on the other side of the world by pressing a free app on your phone. So you now have an expectation that, well, if I can do it on my iPhone with my friend in another country, why can't I do that with you as a business? So as we start to then bring that down to where do AI, where do bots fit? Um, what we tend to see in the customer experience environment is AI and bots add real value in highly structured environments. So you see them being deployed in areas like the travel industry, because if you imagine it a little bit like a roundabout, in a travel situation, there's generally only three, four, five exits on the roundabout. What time's my flight? You know, what gate is the flight? Can I change my flight? Can I book a seat? The variables are all known up front. And so when you operate in that prescribed environment where all of the possibilities um, are known, AI and bots work very, very well. So it's a bit like if you went back however many years ago, 30, 40 years ago, when IBM came out with Big Blue and, and, and the robot or the, the computer first beat the world chess champion. You know, chess is a game that's that's parameterized. There's rules and boundaries. And AI and bots work very well in that. Where they start to sort of run out of runway quite quickly is when you start to introduce different dialects or swear words or different language or stress uh, or situations that are unexpected. So if you think about you've lost your wallet and you're in a foreign country, you're probably going to be quite emotionally sort of stressed and charged. And the language and the way that you phrase things might not fit perfectly well with what the bot is expecting. And so, you know, we always advocate, think about that customer journey, think about what the optimal journey is for the customer, think about what the optimal journey is for the business, then layer in the technologies that, that make sense. And part of that will be automation, part of it will be self-service, Part of it will be human agent service and part of it will be AI bot driven service. And so it's finding that kind of right balance. And what we tend to find is bots are doing great stuff around, you know, high volume, predictable, same stuff again and again and again. And they're also adding a lot of value to the human agent. So if we think about, um, you know, in the engine house world, we have helper bots and coacher bots. So these are bots that can listen to a human interaction, a voice phone call, in real time, the bot can understand exactly what's going on in exactly the same way, you know, that Alexa, Amazon Echo on your kitchen worktop can understand what you're what you're asking it to do. Exactly the same technology and natural language understanding and processing, understanding what's going on. But in the background, go off and retrieve information. So when you used to have that phone call with the agent and they were saying, can you hold on a moment? I need to log into another system. The system's going slow today. I just need to pull up your file. Well, we have a helper bot that will go do that in the background, pull up all of that information for you. It will listen to the conversation. So if you're in a regulatory, uh, highly regulated environment, let's say you're selling a mortgage, that the, the coacher bot will listen to that conversation. And if you say something that's inappropriate, um, you know, for example, your house will be repossessed if you don't 
keep up a repayment. Um, that's actually legally an incorrect phrase. The bot will recognize that and coach the agent to correct that. And if the agent doesn't, it will escalate it to their supervisor or boss. So it's this this blend in the role that we see is that um, there's a there's a space and a place for AI and bots to do the the run of the mill routine, highly prescribed, predefined stuff. And then there's another role which is really assisting the human agent. So it's a little bit like if you were stood in a court and you looked at the barrister, you know, you've got that rural expert who's pulling in a whole bunch of information in real time to present that to the judge and the jury. But they've generally got two or three, four people sat behind them that are making notes, highlighting, pulling information and pushing that forward to the barrister to present in real time. And that's really where we see, you know, the, the helper bots, the coacher bots working in harmony with the human agent. And I think one of the things that we see um, with smart companies that have thought about the customer journey, they've done think, thought about the digital by design approach, is that whenever you deploy AI bots, you know, AI driven web chat, you always have to have that escape route built in of the, the escalation path of when the bot runs out of runway, how can it flip it to a human very quickly and all of that context that, that was already provided by the end customer is kept and, and, and pushed forward to the human agent so that there's a seamless handoff. There's nothing more frustrating for a, for a customer than to interact with a bot, provide a bunch of information, the bot can't deal with it, and then they have to go sit in a call and wait to speak to a human. And all of the context, all of the information that was pre previously provided just evaporates. So, so you've got to kind of think about how these technologies you know, are, are integrated and linked together and work in harmony. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you, you sort of preempted what I was what I was going to ask you about there, which were some of the key considerations that, that you tell customers when, when they come and they, they say, oh, we're considering automating this particular process. And, and, and there's various factors, isn't there, in terms of you touched on agent augmentation, you know, helping call centre agents. We all think of bots as in in terms of one-on-one -on -one communication between a customer and a bot but as you said it, it's much more sophisticated than that to, to really do it effectively you, there's several layers of technology in different areas of a contact center yeah absolutely i mean uh, uh, and, and sometimes i think when we start to th talk about ai bots nlu nlp these type of technologies quite quickly when you're sat with an end organization they can start to feel like you're starting to talk about designing of the next space shuttle and you're going to need an NASA size IT budget to do it. And actually, when you come back to that basics of thinking about the customer journey and then layering on the technology that you already have. So a great example would be, you know, if you've ever parked a car in any UK town or city, you'll have probably had to pay by phone because you haven't got like, you know, 30 pounds in pound coins in, in your in your pocket. Um, and those systems are typically driven by a company called Ringo, um, you know, pay to park, all those kind of things are, are powered by Ringo underneath it. And that's an end house, you know, customer and end house technology. But actually, when you look at the technology that's in play, a lot of it is just a, a more modernized, advanced version of stuff that's been around for a little while. You know, IVR, the classic press one for sales and two for service. If you think about how you're interacting it's now just through an app, but instead of pressing one for sales, you're typing it onto your phone and interacting or you're speaking it into your phone. But fundamentally, the, the technologies is an evolution of what was there 10, 20 years ago. Um, so some of the time, this stuff doesn't need to be, you know, as complicated, I think, as, as, as many organizations make it out to be. Absolutely. And I, I was all, I was going to also mention that in terms of th this is a development of, of previous technology and, and we have to be able to differentiate from sophisticated bot technology fr from that from that initial intelligent routing, which, which companies like you and have, have been doing for absolutely years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I and I I think it's like all of these things when we we, we started the conversation talking about omnichannel customer experience and what, what channels to use. And actually, you know, if you look at the predominant channels, so for example, you look at the contact Babel report, in combination, 86% of customer interactions right now are either going through voice or email. Um, so a really good place to, to, to start and look at where do we get a quick win is make sure your voice and your email channel works really well. 
Um, so sometimes, you know, we see organizations worrying about layering in AI and bot when they don't have the voice piece right, which, yes, it would be cool to deploy that technology. And as a technology company, it would be great for us to get involved in that. But actually, if you take a step back and say, will that really drive increased value to your end consumers? The answer is probably not. The place to really focus on is get that voice piece working right. And one of the biggest wins in voice, if we think about um, think about yourself and the way that you interact, you know, most people, when they've got a customer problem, the first thing they do is type it into Google um, to try and solve it themselves. The last thing people really want to do is sit in a queue and wait to speak to a human. So people are a lot more willing to self-serve. So if we see concepts like social service where, you know, companies like GifGaf are very, very good at using their other, their existing customers to help other customers through user forums and have a whole reward mechanism set up to, to do that. So as we start to sort of think about, you know, what is the right approach, as more and more stuff is solved through a self or automated mechanism, by definition, the stuff that ends up coming through to a human is the awkward, ugly, complex stuff that can't be can't be solved. You know, it can't be fixed easily. And if we now start to think about, well, who's best placed in the company um, to fix this problem? And quite often, it's not your classic contact center agent. They're people that are in the middle and back office of your organization. They may be senior management that ne are needed for a particular decision. They may be third party suppliers to your organization. And so this is what is driving the, the huge growth in things like you know, unified communications and collaboration technologies like Microsoft Teams and Slack. Um, you know, companies need a collaboration environment to solve these problems. We see technologies, you know, like one-time URLs that are being pushed out to customers to say, you know, this is, sorry, your holiday didn't go right. We're happy to make a refund of a thousand pounds. Are you happy to accept it? Click this link to acknowledge acceptance of this offer. So, you know, it's this combination of things that, that are being brought into place. And so, you know, when we look at, um, you know, Microsoft, we call it the concept of connected enterprise, but you need the, the classic picture of that sort of battery farm contact center where there's like 300 people sat with a little tiny desk, all uniform, wearing a headset, doing the same, you know, like the Victorian factory version of a contact center. Actually, when you go into most organizations now, that's completely not the case. The contact center is smaller. And it's a lot more dispersed. So there's different people in different departments that are pulled in to a customer situation when they can add specific and explicit sort of skills to that that customer problem. And, and Jeremy, it's fascinating talking to you and, and hearing about the, the different areas. And, and as you said, it's a, it's a complex business. Where can the, I realise we've touched on this from a very high level. So where can the viewers go? I know you, Eng House, have, have done lots of work in terms of white papers and research. What's the, the best place for the viewers to, to find out more information? Yeah, so I'd say, you know, obviously visit enghouseinteractive.co.uk. There's a whole host of information there. There's videos, there's case studies. We talked about Ringo and many others um, earlier. Fujitsu is another example of an AI-driven customer case study. So there's a whole bunch of stories and white papers and artifacts and assets um, that, that can be found there. Obviously, we're on LinkedIn and social media as well. So you can follow us on um, you know, Twitter and LinkedIn to get kind of, you know, updates on, on you know, or more media updates. Um, but the deeper, richer content um, is generally on our own website. Um, so, so yeah, that would be a great place to start. Well, I was going to say, we'll, we'll include the links to that uh, on the video so that the, right. the viewers can go straight through to that. But, but Jeremy, for the meantime, thank you so much and talking to me a little bit more about it. It's my pleasure. Thank you for asking us to participate.